okay let me know if my screen is visible so that uh, we are good to start okay my screen is visible okay okay good good thank you for confirming so let us do a small recap guys so yesterday we were uh, discussing about the object creation process in java we already know how to do the object creation so yesterday we have discussed about the things that were happening behind the scenes okay so with one line we know that the object can be created with with a line with one line so this line is enough to create the object so, but uh, we have discussed some steps you know some things that were involved behind the scenes right so this was the program this was a typical uh, programmatical explanation so we have take this an example okay and uh, there were many steps involved behind okay step number one you know saving the saving the java code with the respective dot java extension okay and here we have step number two compilation okay this is the command for the compilation after compilation you know uh, you can see a lot of dot class files this dot class files are equal to number of classes that is placed in a particular package if we have two classes two dot class files will be generated okay and this is the command to to load the uh, main dot class file which means uh, the class that has main method okay that that dot class file needs to be loaded to the jvm okay while loading this dot class file static content will get recognized and executed okay after that main thread will get access to the main method okay first instruction is the object creation instruction this is the syntax not the syntax uh, substitute uh, you know we have just substituted the syntax okay a constructor will be called and again a dot class file has to get loaded okay a static content will be recognized okay and uh, uh, the reference variable obj is called as a reference variable and a reference value will be generated by the jvm okay so and these are the things these are the you know these are the some points that we have discussed yesterday okay so today we are going to discuss about the hash code method and the two string method so these two methods are going to support the object creation process usually internally these two methods are used for the uh, to generate the reference reference value of the object creation okay by theory it may be a little confusing but by uh, when when we implement these things in the practically you will get you will get much clarity okay so let's get it started firstly uh, let us let me introduce the ash code method So the hash code method says this is the this is how the hash code hash code method looks public integer and uh, here we have hash code okay. so when you invoke this method this method is going to return return an integer value it can be any value okay this is going to return an integer value okay, i can say that integer okay. so uh, this is the name of the method name of the method is hash code method this method is a predefined method predefined method that is present in the object class so the theory can be like the hash code method is a predefined method why it is predefined method because it is already defined by the java people Okay. as code method is a predefined method that is placed in the predefined class by the name of object so there is a predefined class called as the object class inside this class so there are 11 methods as code is one among them okay the purpose of this method is like when you invoke this method it is going to return an integer value when you invoke this method 
you will keep will return an integer value unique integer value unique integer value okay usually this method is used to represent the general contract of the hash code so we will discuss these things in the future classes for now when you invoke this method you will get an integer value this integer value can be anything it varies from one object to the another object if for example when i have uh, a o b j equal to new a okay if i am trying to invoke the hash code method on top of this reference variable obj dot hash code when i say this okay you will get a different different integer value for this particular object let me correct this uh, this is uh, this is a native method actually you will get a, a respective integer value it can be anything it is not like it, should, it, it is going to be one two five three six three it is not like that it can be any any integer value but it is always going to be say if you invoke today on top of obj class okay this is what the value is if you invoke after some time the value is going to be same okay a an unique identity identity will be given for a particular reference variable of an object for this obj this is the unique identity so when i do the same thing with the different reference variable this time i am using obj1 okay i am going to get a different hash code and unique it will be an unique identity we will see these things in actions okay this is the simple definition of an hash code when, you, when i say hash code hash code is a predefined method that is placed in the predefined class which is by the name of object when you invoke this method it will it will it will just return an integer unique integer value okay next thing is the two string method two string method okay so again this two string method is also the part of the object class it is going to the syntax is going to be like public string two string it is going to return it is going to return a string value you can say that the implement the implement implementation of the two string so please bear with me there will be little theory here so after this theory in five minutes we are going to see these things in actions in the practical way okay in the implementation of the truth True string method is, is already given in the object class. In the object class and this is also a predefined method in the object class. Right? So it is going to return a string value when you invoke this method or when you call this method when you call this two string when you call this two string method it is going to return a string it is going to return a string value which consists of class name followed by the at, at the rate symbol and the Unsigned representation of the hexadecimal number of the hash code. 
okay so by theory okay it is creating a lot of confusion let me give you a small example what does it really mean is look at this example okay so when the hash code is for example if i have a class if i am creating an object for the class a a obj equal to u a okay so this is the obj is always called as the reference variable okay yesterday if you remember about the object creation process whenever you whenever you are creating an object by using this syntax okay whenever an object is created by using the syntax when you say a obj equal to new a okay for this internally what is going to happen for for this a obj equal to new a in the heap area okay an heap area will be created okay so let us assume that this is the heap area okay so in the jvm there are many areas and heap area is going to store all the objects the okay, heap area is designed to store all the object okay this is the just assume that this is the heap area okay cap and we have another area which is called as the stack area okay we have an another area called as the stack area this is the stack area or the stack area okay what happens because of this new keyword because of this new keyword an object gets created right an object is going to get created because of this new keyword okay and this is what this is called as this obj is called as reference variable okay so this reference variable will be stored in this stack area firstly so this is a stack area okay so this reference variable this obj will be stored in the stack area okay so refer I, i can say this as variable let me reduce the size variable or reference variable and uh, this side i can say that so this is reference variable or ef reference variable and this is going to be a reference value okay obj will be stored here okay for this reference variable a reference value will be created how this reference value will be created firstly firstly for this obj what happens devia uh, main thread is going to convert this obj create an hash code for this particular object so the, now the main thread will come into the picture a main thread is going to create an hash code firstly it will create an hash code for this particular obj first step hash code will be created by the jvm or the main thread okay the hash code can be any random numbers it, it is going to be a unique number but we are not sure how it is going to get generated these are the internal things okay you do not have to worry about that it can be any number but it is going to be unique So for us, let us say that the number is going to be one two three four five, one two three four five six. Okay. Firstly, the hash code will be generated. Then what happens? The second step, this hash code will be converted to hexadecimal number. Okay. This hash code is converted to hexadecimal number. okay so you can convert this to hexadecimal number and upon converting this number to hexadecimal number you keep divide this by 16 okay and uh, you will get a value like something like a b 1 2 3 4 5 okay after having this converted to hexadecimal number okay what happens the class name will be prefix prefix in front of this in front of this hexadecimal number Okay, let me keep it here if you look at the theory which i have just mentioned the other rate symbol will be prefixed class name followed by other rate symbol will be prefixed for the hexadecimal number that is generated from the hash code what does it really mean before this okay class name what is the class name a a is the class name followed by other rate symbol will be pre prefix yes Okay. so this is this will be treated as the reference value this will be treated as the reference value okay this reference value will be assigned to this newly created object 
okay so in the future when you are trying to print obj not this one this one okay in the future when you are trying to print obj you will you will see this reference value being displayed in the console making sense everyone okay let let us understand this in a practical problem now let me take a class here okay let me remove all this now i want answers from you so this is the class a okay class a public static void main okay so let me take a constructor system dot out dot print align so a the name of the constructor is a con i am taking the static block static k system dot out dot print align I am trying to get access. I am trying to print the reference value, reference variable. Okay, if I print the reference variable, something needs to be displayed in the console. Okay, can you guess me the output for this? If I compile and run this program, what kind of output that I can expect? Always think that, always focus that the execution will start from the main method. Okay, can you give me the answer? static k a con obj static k a con obj what about others static k a con obj static k a con obj static k a con jyoti yes Okay, okay, Madhu, Madhu is correct. A at the rate reference value. Madhu is correct, okay. Everyone tried your best, but uh, the right answer is given by Madhu. Java C space A dot Java. Okay, Java space here. One minute, uh, I need to save this program. So I did not do that. So it should be saved as A dot Java because I am. okay so the file has been saved successfully so java c space a dot java the compilation is successful java space okay, you can see you know static blocks are recognized and executed at the time of loading the bytecode of the memory so this is okay a con so a con why a con because why a con because we are calling the a constructor okay so i have placed a constructor I have placed a constructor by myself. Okay, the control is going to invoke this constructor which I have just placed, and the instructions inside the constructor is going to get executed. That's why Acon. Okay. After this, we are trying to get access. We are going trying to print this reference variable obj. Internally, what happens whenever you try to print the reference variable obj? Internally. Please going to call the two string method internally two string method 
internally okay let me let me uh, you know let me take this program okay now you focus here okay, this is our program uh, size is reduced let me remove this slice Hey, pay 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 attention here this is going to be interesting okay so these are the uh, developer perspective this is the program uh, created by the developer so when you do the compilation compiler will go, compiler is going to add few more things okay there will be some add-ons okay? first compiler is going to add extends object extends object class every class every class will get extended to the object class by default this will be added by the compiler secondly before this class here, okay. Since we are not specifying any access modifier, this class will be treated as a default class. By default, by pronunciation, it is going to be a default class. Okay. Thirdly, so whenever you are calling a you whenever you are calling a reference variable in system dot out dot println statement, compiler will compiler is going to do what call to string method okay, we see only opj but compiler is going to place dot to string method so, okay so here we are calling the reference variable we are trying to print the reference variable okay when you are trying to print the reference variable this is our code we are just placing this reference variable in the system dot out dot printer statements yes or no but internally compiler is going to do what it is going to add this additional statement it is going to call two string method i will explain what is two string method okay when you see extends object it is like for every class for every class object class is the parent class okay if i want to uh, take the real time analogy for example, uh, see, uh, so we are living in the earth, okay, so our uh, solar system, earth is the part, part of our solar system, right, so we have a life in the earth, right, so if you talk about the life in the earth, okay, we, uh, there are humans, there are animals, there are birds, there are insects, okay, lot of uh, things are there, L lot of, lot of survival is happening in the earth, different kinds of animals, insects, birds and all, for everything, okay, some, some mandatory things are like, for the living especially for the living the mandatory things are like you know food is mandatory water is mandatory and there should be a place to live that is also mandatory and there should be a, a place to sleep okay these are the mandatory things food water shelter right to stay alive not only for humans for animals for birds for insects for everything right these are the common things but uh, we humans we have some extraordinary things okay we are uh, very much comfortable every time we are making ourselves in the comfort zone so we got adapted to uh, we got adapted to many things and we have discovered so many things that is the secondary thing but the primary thing is what don't you think that food is the primary uh, water is the primary and shelter is the primary not only for humans it is for animals for birds for every living being right likewise in java for all the classes Okay, object class is the parent class or the super class. It is a super class, or we can call it as a, 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 a it's it's a kind of a god class. Okay, this object class has some some methods inside. Okay, totally the class object. So when you talk about the object class, okay, this object class has internally eleven methods. Eleven methods okay so when you when you extend your class even if you extend your class or if you don't extend your class by default the compiler is going to extend your class to the object class it means you are getting access to the all 11 methods these are the most important methods every class needs this uh, needs uh, needs this method uh, to build any kind of uh, you know uh, any kind of programming logic okay that's why compiler is extending your class to the object class this has 11 methods and this two string method 
is one of the method and the hash code method is another one method right since uh, this is the concept of inheritance since you are new to the inheritance since the concept of inheritance is not introduced let me give you the small example okay here i have a class a let me remove all this okay, now you focus here this is my class a okay and i have another class here a class b i am saying okay i have a class a i have a class class b in the class b let me take a method like void method one so i have a method in the class b the name of the method is method one okay let me keep another method in class a so in the class a i am taking the method as method two okay so system dot out dot print talent okay method of class b just a small print alone statement i am taking to understand the control flow nothing else okay this is not a logic just a print alone statement to understand whether the control is going there or not method of class a okay i have two classes method one and method two okay but the method one is placed in class b method two is placed in class a okay now you tell me how many methods are there in class a how many methods are there in class a by looking at this you can tell tell me right how many methods are in class a totally one method huh? two methods in class a you have to include the main method also right mm -hmm. main method is also a method but since uh, you know it has it is a very powerful method you need to involve that method also it doesn't like you should not uh, include the main method we have two methods in class a main method is included as well as the method two. yes or no hmm. right two methods so if i uh, when i talk about class b specifically how many methods are there in class b how many methods are there one method in class b okay so these are two separate classes but the moment when i use extends when i use extends b now you see class a is extending b okay this is the concept of inheritance we are going to discuss about this inheritance in the future topics this is a very big topic but i will give you the brief idea now brief introduction now when i say class a is extending class b let me write this program in a different way okay i new Mm, save. Okay. So see now what did what did I just do? Class A is extending class B. What does it mean? When you use extends keyword, the moment you use extends keyword, deliberately or by yourself, okay, what happens? The A class is going to be a child class. Okay, and the B class is going to be a parent class or the super class okay, the moment you use extends keyword it means all the properties of all the properties and the behaviors of the b, uh, b class b will be will also be given to the class a so it is like a parent child relationship for example see in your own uh, so you your parents uh, your your dad may be owning a bike or a car or a cycle whatever it is okay you have rights to get access to that bike right you can uh, take the bike keys and you can go wherever you want okay you have that privilege right for example uh, your parents are you know for example your parents have some assets okay so those assets belongs to the next generation which means to the children generation right the property that i am talking about okay you also indirectly the owner of that property right which means you have all the privileges you have all the privileges and rights to get access to your parents property yes or no like same example okay so when i use extends keyword the class that is placed after the extends keyword which is b is going to become a parent class okay the class which is extending or the before the extend keyword is going to become child class okay what does it really mean parent class child class it is also called as the uh, base class 
or super class okay the child class is also called as the derived class or subclass okay it means the class a has all rights to get access to the properties and the behaviors of the class b okay by looking at this how many methods are there in class b you have just said that one method is there in class b yes or no okay only one method is there in class b okay but when you when you look at class a how many methods are there in class a two methods are are there in class a two methods are there in class a only when you are not using extends keyword since you have used extends keyword two methods of class a as well as you have also rights to get access to this method which is placed in the class b so two methods plus one method in class b totally three methods are there yes or no because you have also rights to access this method you have rights to act class a as method 2 method 2 is part of class a agree main method is part of class a agree since you are using extends keyword you also have access and rights or privileges to access this method 1 which is placed in class b making sense when i ask you how many methods are there in class a okay by looking at it you are saying two but by looking at the extends keyword you need to count these two methods as well as the method that is placed in the class b so totally three methods are there in class b visibly two indirectly one method but by looking at the class b by 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 our look you know by our visibility it is only one method okay this uh, class b won't get access to the methods of the child class but child class will always get access to the method methods and properties of the parent class making sense no everyone yes no Okay. Okay. Now keep this in mind. Now keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Now previously I was telling you that object classes eleven method. Okay. Let us do. Let us uh, run one example for the better clarity. Okay. What I am trying to do is when I say obj dot method two obj dot method one. now you tell me this obj reference variable is part of which class class a or class b obj reference variable i mean the object has been created for the class a okay when the object is created for the class a let me remove this extends keyword okay now you think and tell me i have removed the extends keyword now object has been created for the class a okay so when uh, when i do this what is output now obj dot method to what is output now very simple question method of class a right yeah method of class a good so when i do this what is output now Okay, now the second question. Second question is, so I am calling method one. What is the output now? Here, do you agree with Madhu, everyone? Okay, let us see what what error we are going to get. Java C space A dot Java. So we are seeing cannot find symbol obj dot method one. What does it really mean? Is let me take this once again. now we focus here okay. so object has been created after creating the object with the help of reference variable reference variable is what obj obj is of class a type okay. obj is of what class a type yes or no obj is of class a type okay so this uh, this control okay, the main thread will look for the method one in the class within the class a why within the class a because that is what we have specified obj is of a type that's why it will keep looking looking uh, for this method only in the class a right it is not finding this method one in the class a that's why the error is was error error in the console is displayed as cannot find symbol obj dot method one the main thread is not able to find this method one 
okay the movement when i use extends keyword extends b okay. now class a is extending b when i do this b is going to become the super class and a is going to be the subclass or the child class okay. what is output now do we still get error or do we get any kind of output now Oh, got my question. Okay, so I'm calling the method one. Okay, again I'm calling the method one, but I have made a small change here. Extends b. Earlier the extends keywords, this extends keyword is not there in the uh, previous example. Okay, method of b class. Okay, why method of b? Class? Now, now you see now what's happening. The moment I add this extends keyword, okay. So again the object create object is created okay the object is created for the obj reference variables of class type okay now on top of this reference variable obj we are calling what method one okay the control will check for the method one the class a it is not uh, you know uh, the method one is not found in the class a after this what it will do it will recognize whether this class a is getting extended to any other class yes is getting extended to class b okay now the control will be transferred to the class b and we'll look for the method one it has found the method one so the output is going to be method of class b right now now uh, let me uh, hope you have understood this everyone type yes if you have understood this okay okay so now what i am trying to do is so now you answer me so method one of class a okay same program same program only one change i have made okay i have added the method one of class b in the class a okay. now what is output now My question is clear okay what is the output of this program so again i am calling method one what will be printed in the console method one on top of obj obj also of class a type what is the output method one of class a correct okay if i run this code method one of class a why method one of class a this time what is going to happen see you see you see how the control is trying to how the control is trying to fetch the uh, fetch the relevant method okay we are going to see that now okay the same program but a small change so main method will get access to the uh, main control will get access to the main method and we are calling obj dot method one okay obj is of a type okay firstly it will check for the method one in the class a itself it has found the method one in the class a. so this will be executed okay if it is not finding the method one in the class b i mean in the class a then it will look in the parent class it will check in the class b then this will be executed okay and if it is not finding this method in the class b okay it will look in the parent class what is the parent class of class b now i have already said if you are placing extends keyword no issues if you are not placing extends keyword the parent class is going to be extends object mother of all classes god of all the classes extends object 
okay the control will go to the object class and we will check for the method if it's not finding we will get an error if it is finding we will get the relevant output making sense everyone okay okay now we are going now we will get into the actual topic as code and the two string method okay this uh, i think uh, this knowledge is enough to understand this as code and the two string method okay let me remove this let me remove this as well let me remove this as well a simple class i have class a and i'm creating object for the class a a o b j equal to new a okay so now uh, integer third one okay so i am i am placing this method wantedly okay so what is happening in terms of system dot out dot print element okay when i want to print this reference variable obj when i want to print this reference variable obj what exactly is happening behind the things that we will understand now okay so let me copy this so we know okay let me run this first we will try to find the output on top of the output we will start the discussion okay this is the output the question is why the output is in the form of uh you know the integer representation as well as why this uh, at the right symbol is being added and why the class here we will analyze We'll try to find why the output is being displayed in the form of this representation okay let me copy this let me take the new paint screen okay this is the class okay i have already said you uh, object class is the uh, mother of or the parent of all the classes okay so when the programmer is not extending any class by default compiler is going to extend every class to the object class okay. these things will be taken care by the compiler extends object okay and also yes. object okay and uh, since this is uh, we haven't placed any access modifier like public this class will be treated as a default by pronunciation it is a default okay apart from this 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 two uh, apart from this it will auto it, it will also add a constructor i have said that extra constructor is a, is going to be same as the class name so a an opening uh, bracket okay, this three things apart from this three things when you try to print the reference variable okay it will read this reference variable like obj dot two string okay, internally you see only obj but compiler will do this obj dot it will call two string method okay by looking at this if i want to uh, convert this into a diagrammatic illustration this is how the conversion is going to be right this is child class and this is the parent class what is the name of the parent class obj object why object because object class is the mother of all the classes all the uh, it is it has 11 methods internally these 11 methods is the basic method is an essential methods they are the essential method that is required for all the classes developed by the programmer Okay, this is the object class and this is our our class class here okay since we are using uh, since the compiler is using extends keyword this is how the diagrammatic illustration is going to be a is extending object okay so we can call this as the child class or uh, the derived class or what subclass child class or the derived class or the subclass okay the object class is with respect to the child class this object class is what parent class or base class or 
super class okay so now you tell me how many methods are there in class a how many methods are there in class a everyone how many methods are there in class a think and tell me what about others jyoti what about uh, okay think and tell me uh, we, we everyone knows it is true when i ask you something you should think and tell me how many methods are there, there in class a with respect to object class think and tell me don't just answer like uh, i don't uh, ask you i know that it is true but if i am asking you something like how many methods are there in class a you should think and answer three methods are three okay i will tell you i have already said object class object is a class which is going to which has already 11 methods inside yes or no object class is is the home for 11 basic methods and i have said hash code is one of the method and two string is another method it has 11 methods internally object class when you talk about object class object class is placing 11 methods internally this is home for this common 11 methods okay so in the class a we already we have two methods including main method and including this method one there are two methods okay 2 plus 11 how many are there 13 methods totally okay, we will think about this we will discuss about this 11 methods each and every method individually for today's topic discussion among these 11 methods okay we, today we are discussing only two methods which is which are hash code one is the hash code method the second one is two string method okay so when i talk about uh, when i uh, like you know bring in the class a when i ask you about how many methods are there in class a you should also consider the number of methods that is available in the parent class as well as number of methods that is available in the child class so this 11 method you cannot see this 11 methods you are blind to this method but compiler is going to place this 11 methods in the object class making sense everyone do you agree with me a previous example previous exam previously i have taken two classes in the class b i have placed one method in the class a i have placed two methods including the main method I was asking you how many methods are there in the class here. You said three. Two plus one, three. Same, uh, same analogy, same rule is applied for this object class also. Object class has 11 methods and the class A, A, A has two methods, okay? When you are using the extends keyword, it is like you will get all the properties and behaviors of the parent class to the child class. Hierarchy, inheritance hierarchy, parent-child relationship, okay? You have all the rights and privileges to access your parents property access your parents materials everything likewise so when you talk about child from the child perspective okay child has two methods method one and the main method along with that child has also rights to access 11 methods of the parent class which is which is nothing but the object class so totally 13 methods right okay so now so we want to we want to uh, we are going to understand why we are getting this as an output okay internally what happens is so if you go back to this diagram two string method is being called two string method is being called okay so theory says two string method method is already given in the object class and this is also a predefined method in the object class okay when you call two string method it is going to return a string value which consists of the class name followed by add symbol what it says the moment this two string method is called firstly what it will do internally okay the name of the class the name of the class is here followed by add the head symbol these two things will be added at the same time it will find the hash code hash code value hash code value will be generated and this hash code value will be converted to hexadecimal number hexadecimal number 
okay the main thread is going to do what the main main thread is going to find generate an hash code value for this reference variable obj okay hash code value is an unique value that is generated by the kvm okay now understand this hash code is a is an integer or unique integer value integer value that that will be generated by the JVM by using hash code method okay, by using which method hash code method so internally what is happening JVM is trying to do some operations what kind of operations okay it is generating an hash code for obj we will generate instead of jvm let us generate by ourselves okay system system dot out dot println obj dot hash code obj dot hash code when you call hash code method hash code method is part of the object class okay, let me write extends also Okay. The moment you call this method, the first this method will be checked in the current class. It is not going to be available in the current class. So the control will be transferred to the parent class, which is object class. Inside the object class, there is a method called hash code method. Okay. Once you call this method, it is going to return an, a random value. Let us see what is that random value. These things will be done by the JVM, but we are doing it deliberately to for the understanding. Okay. Let me run this. It is capital C hash code. Our space. Okay, we got the hash code three six six one seven two six four two. Let me copy this and paste it here. Okay, so this is the hash code. Okay, let us go back to the theory. This hash code is an unique integer value that will be generated by the JVM by using hash code method. So this thing uh, hash code will be generated by the JVM by using the hash code method. Okay, this hash code method will be, you know, I mean this value will be converted to hexadecimal value. So I can say that the generated hash code will be converted to the exa decimal value by using the two string method two string method okay let us convert this to the exa decimal value by ourselves okay let me open the online converter okay by manually it will take a lot of time google code So this is the hash code. Okay, I am converting it to extra decimal. What is the number that we got? 15 DB9742. Let me copy it and paste it here. Okay. It will convert it to what? Extra decimal number. This is the hexadecimal number. Hash code has got converted to hexadecimal number. You can also do the conversion by you need to keep adding it by 16, dividing it by 16. Okay. After this conversion, the class name, after this conversion, the class name followed by at the rate symbol followed by hexadecimal number. Okay, it will be. Produced by two string method. What does it mean? What is the name of the class that we are working on? Class A. So A followed by at the rate symbol. At the rate symbol. Okay. Followed by the converted hexadecimal number from the hash code. 
okay a at the rate 15 dp 6742 don't you think that we have got the same answer a at the rate 15 dp 9742 is it matching everyone yes no are you, are you able to understand you need to remember two things here one first thing is okay internally two string method will be called okay so two string method means the two string method is going to return a value how the value will be returned it will consider the class name firstly these are the internal things okay it will consider the class name be followed by at the right symbol okay and it will depend upon the hash code again internally it is going to call hash code okay it will it will going to get an hash code and that, that hash code will be converted to hexadecimal number these are the internal things which we have done manually Manually also we got the same answer yes or no we got the same answer manually making sense right so the point here is here our operation is okay uh, let me remove this we are just calling the we are just trying to print the reference variable okay so you will get uh, knocked out of this meeting please rejoin okay everyone rejoin one if you get knocked out okay so we are trying to print the reference variable okay when the moment when you try to print the reference variable internally okay thank you for rejoining uh, what i was saying okay. so when you are trying to print the reference variable of an object internally two string method will be called okay. the two string method and again it is going to depend upon the as code okay. so as code internally it is going to call as code method Okay. and after getting the hash code this hash code will be converted to hexadecimal number okay. after getting this hexadecimal number the output will be written in the form of this syntax class name class name followed by other rate symbol and the hexadecimal number that we have got from the respective hash code these many things are happening inside Okay. the two string method is part of which class object class this hash code is part of which class object class okay. this are the term. just by, by 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 printing obj is a reference variable of class a internally it is like obj dot when you do this same answer okay the moment you do the same answer or the moment you just want to print obj you will get the same answer there will be no changes with your answer or system dot out dot printl and okay no, this is not necessary for these two things the answer is going to be same yes or no do you agree with me even if you do this you will get the same answer even if you do this you will get the same answer why because when you when you uh, when you want to print uh, the reference variable internally the compiler is going to add this two string method the answer is going to be same yes or no okay, this is a parsing error okay, let me uh, let me run this once again okay, are able to see we are getting the same answer this, this is the proof when you do this or when you do this both are going to give the same answer but you can skip this internally two string method will be called two string method is part of which class object class making sense now you see 
this is the this is object one okay now a o b j two equal to new a okay now you see what is happening internally sum dot out dot print ln i was saying that unique cache code will be generated for each and every reference variable okay this is the proof opj1 dot hash code and obj2 dot hash code okay when i try to extract hash code for the reference variable obj1 obj2 the hash code should be different even though the class is same we are creating object for the class a but two different objects this is obj1 object obj2 this is a different reference variable this is different different reference variable okay when i run this see this hash code is different right see this is a different value this is a different value okay now if you go back to the theory and if you just read this hash code is a predefined method that is placed in the uh, predefined class by the name of object when you invoke this method it will return an unique integer value unique integer value. every time it is going to be unique okay, even if you add another object even if you try to create uh, the another object by using a different reference variable okay for these three reference variables the object uh, i mean uh, the hash code is going to be an unique it's not going to be same Okay. and if you find the hdml number see uh, we got the hash code okay we got the hash code okay and to uh, to print the exact reference value reference value to print the exact reference value what we need to do here okay, we got the hash code let me copy this guys okay. we got the hash code convert this hash code to hdml number okay then you do what after this uh, syntax is class name followed by authorate symbol followed by the uh, you know uh, the generated hash code i mean uh, convert the uh, generated hash code into xr decimal number this one you get what you get the reference exact reference value making sense now you got the difference between what is hash code and what is uh, the reference variable yes no Answer me. Good, good, good. Okay. Let me open my paint screen now. Okay. So this is these are the uh, we are creating objects objects for three times we are creating objects for three times okay so the control uh, you know usually what happens in the memory that there are going to be the two there are many areas one is uh, the heap area the second one is what and we have uh, the uh, stack area so this is the stack area Okay, this is the heap area and this is the stack area so they are the uh, memory areas in the jvm okay so for all the there are how many new keywords here three new keywords here right so three objects will be created object one object two and object d as soon as the objects are created okay the reference it has to find we need the jvm has to find the reference exact reference value for the reference variable okay that will happen in the method stack area in the stack area there will be a table this table is going to uh, place what so here uh, the first column is for reference variable okay, reference variable is always going to be in the form of string type reference value is going to be form of numerical type Okay, we have three reference variables right obj1 obj2 obj3 
okay obj1 for obj1 we need to find not v the jvm has to find the reference value what jvm does firstly it will try to invoke hash code we find hash code okay what is hash code these are the hash codes we created we generated manually but jvm will take care of these things internally you don't have to worry about this okay so these are the hash codes you have three hash codes okay all these hash codes needs to convert it to what hexadecimal number internally again jvm will take care hash code will be converted to hexadecimal number by using two string method first it will find hash code by using hash code method by using this hash code method it will again invoke two string method okay so we will do that for the first conversion this is the hexadecimal value for the second hash code this is online convert you can try it from your side also just type uh, uh, online decimal to hexadecimal converter you will get this okay so this is the second one so this is the third hash code hash code is getting converted to hexadecimal value and we have got this after getting this uh, the syntax says use the class name and the at the rate symbol this should be prefixed class name at the rate symbol class name and the at the rate symbol okay allocate each and every hash code to the respective reference value right this should be for this okay this should be for object 2 okay this should be for object 3 okay so this uh, object is going to have the reference value not the reference variable this reference variable will be stored in the stack area okay. object 2 object three. Okay, now you see if I try to print obj1. Okay, so let me remove this. So we have done the things that is usually uh, done by JVM. Now if I try to print obj1 in the memory area, it will look for obj1. Okay, where is obj1 in the memory area? Obj1 is here. What is the reference value? A at the rate 15 db 9742. Yes or no? So I should be seeing this value in the console, right? Let us see. We are going to. Are we getting the same value? Or is the value same? See, seventeen DP nine seven four. Okay. If I try to print uh, OBJ two instead of OBJ one, if I try to print the reference value of OBJ two, or let me print all the three. OBJ one. OBJ2, OBJ3. So we are supposed to get the values that we have generated. Okay, JVM and us, humans and the JVM, they are working on the same hash code method, the same two string method. The concept is same. So the answer that we get should be equal to the answer that uh, the JVM is producing, right? This is space a dot Java, Java C space. A. See? So this is the answer. Let us to compare this answer answer produced by the jvm and answer produced by us let us see both are equal or not do you think that they are equal equal no? now you now you got to know why we are seeing this this as an output when you're trying to print the reference variable of an object you are seeing you are seeing this as an output now you got to know but you see if you do this, if integer a equal to 100, okay, if you want to print the a, okay, you will get this value because we know value is directly assigned to this variable a, primitive type. For the primitive type, you don't face any issues. For the primitive data types, all the values that you are going to assign, that will be displayed in the console. But for the object type, whenever you are creating an object type, internally this many things are happening. Okay, object type. When you print this object type, this is not the one object. See, go back here. 
in this memory again there will be many uh, you know it, it, is, it is going to store the method it is going to store the instance variables again you will see that in the future classes it is not a, it is not representing one entity it is representing all the entities of a class like behaviors and the properties making sense so this is completely different for but for if you want to uh, print the primitive data type it is very easy right for a variable a you are assigning value under only one value you are assigning but this is not the case as soon as you are creating an object internally this a all the properties and behaviors of the class a is being stored in the variable obj that's where uh, you are seeing the reference value as an output making sense okay now you tell me the answer this is the last uh, question obj dot at that one obj dot at that one what is output now obj2 dot at that one obj3 dot at that one your focus should be only the main method so main method you got to know three objects are created right? on the first reference variable you are calling a method okay now you find this method and see what it is returning you tell me the output I hope you got my question. What is the output of this following program? This output. Everyone, Saitanya, Darshini, Krishna Prasad, Teja, Sashwan, Madhu, Jyoti and Jyotiyas, Shamitpa. What is the output of this program? Very simple question. Why are you taking a lot of time? Blanca. Don't know. Okay, at least answer don't know. No? Nothing. Okay, at least you should answer. If you know, you can answer, or else if you don't know, you can answer, you don't know. Okay, let me run this. Hundred, hundred, hundred. Why, why you are saying don't know? Tirumala, why you are not answering? Three hundred, you will get. Good, Samyukta. 300 will get why 300 see obj1 dot method one okay this is obj1 with this with this reference variable we are calling what method one okay the control will see look for the method one okay method one is already there okay so let me explain this to you So we are not preparing any program here we are just trying to understand the control flow that is the uh, that is our agenda actually we are trying to understand what the control flow see i've already told you many times whenever a program is given you need to look from the main method okay Okay. So, because of this obj1, three objects are created. We know objects will be created in the stack in the uh, which area? In the heap area. Okay. So, this will get some reference variables. Okay. We know all this. Okay. So, for the uh, now we need to talk about this instruction. So, system.order.println method one Okay. The control will be, this control will look for which method? Method 1. In the current class, in the class A, OBJ1 is of what type? OBJ1 is of what type? Class A type. It will look for the method 1 in the class A. Inside the class A, it has found the method 1. Only one thing, only uh, the method 1. If you call this method 1, this method 1 is returning you what? 100. You call that and you get 100. That is the logic. Okay. This 100 will be returned back. Okay. You need to display this 100 in the console. 
this 100 will be displayed in the console. That's why first time it is 100. Okay, the control will be moved to the next line. Again, obj2 dot method 1. obj2 is a what type? Class A type. In the class A, it will search for method 1 again. Method 1 is there. It is returning again again again. You call this method, it is returning 100. Okay. It will carry that 100 along with this. Along with the control will carry this 100 along with it. Since it is a written value. Okay, you have you need to uh, this has to be displayed in the console because system dot order print directly. Third line obj dot obj obj three dot method one obj three is of what type a type in the class it will find for method one it is already there right hundred okay so it will carry this hundred along with it. This 100 needs to be displayed in the console. Why? Because directly we are using system dot order printer. 100. That's why we got 300. Making sense? Making sense? Who said nothing? Who said don't know? Uh, why Thirumala has did not answer? Why Krishna Prasad did not answer? Making sense, everyone? Right? Now you tell me. I will not leave you until you answer this. So what is the answer this time? Think and tell me. Error. Why? We don't get error, Jyoti. It is going to be blank this time. Okay. Same thing. Same logic here. Okay. So the uh, see if I run this, the output is going to be blank. Output is blank. Why blank? It is going to look for the method one it will return 100 but we are not we are not having any variable to store this value 100 so this 100 will be floating somewhere in the memory 100 will be floating somewhere in the memory 100 will be floating somewhere in the memory we need to store this we can either store this by using a variable another variable called integer store one integer store two integer store 3 okay now the store 1 is going to store 100 store 2 100 store 3 100 now you can use system dot out dot println store 1 if i do this 100 will be printed in the console this is a store 1 either use store 1 or you can directly use this now both will be same now Either you store one, hundred will be displayed, or if you use this directly, hundred will be displayed. Either you store two instead of using store instead of uh, wasting a separate variable, I can just copy this, both are equal and paste it here. Both are going to get the same output, right? Previously, I did this, right? obj dot method 1 100 is going to display output or else i can use store 2 i can use store 3 or i can use directly this making sense who said blank um, who said error Jyotian? okay okay guys this is all about the hash code and the two string method okay so tomorrow we will discuss uh,